Oh man, so this is the first part of two videos where I am showing a long process of creating a full finished illustration. That's kind of rare for me. I don't typically put a ton of effort into artwork on my own. I, I had to do that for school, you know, but I guess now that I'm on my own and doing my own thing, I need to be more productive and create finished pieces. So that's part of what my idea was for this one. The image itself is a sort of holiday scene and it involves characters from a Dungeons and Dragons campaign that I'm in. And so I wanted to capture everybody in this setting and make it look sort of natural, not too totally forced, but I also didn't want to exclude characters. And so the composition became a little bit difficult in that way. Because when you look at paintings like The Last Supper, there's several different renditions of that by different artists throughout history, but in all of, all of the ones that I've seen, for the most part, all of the, the subjects are on one side of the table. And that's a little bit weird because unless you're at a wedding or something and you're the bridal party and everybody wants to see you, if you're just kind of hanging around, then it's a little bit awkward and strange for everybody to be seated on the same side of the table. So that's why I have one character in the foreground and you can see his back. He is the knight Gomek that, or the paladin Gomek that I drew in the video that I showed how to draw a Dungeons and Dragons character. Um, and so because I already drew him from the front and also because he doesn't really have facial expressions that are visible because he wears a helmet, I figured that I wouldn't be losing out on too much by placing him with his back to the viewer. Also, he has this really neat pattern detail on the back of his cape, which you'll see painted on in the second part of this video. And so I wanted to show that because you aren't able to see that without his back turned to you. And I thought that that's a cool character detail that I wanted to put down into artwork. So in a drawing like this, you want to have different focal points and different areas of interests. And I think that it's nice to have everybody doing something a little bit different and and you can really play around with where the viewer's eye goes. For example, this character on the left, he's looking sort of in the direction of the bird seated next to him, and the bird is looking somewhere else too, and so that kind of makes your eye travel from him to the bird to whatever the bird is looking at while you view the piece. And that's something that can be really useful to think about when you're drawing something like this, because knowing where the viewer's eye is going to go and where you want to direct the viewer's eye is going to be, it's going to affect the success of your piece. You know, if you don't consider these types of things when you're drawing something large, then it might not feel as cohesive and it might be a little disjointed or it might not hold the viewer's interest for as long as the viewer should be looking at it, dependent on you know how much time you put into it. If you put a lot of work into something and people don't really sit there and get all the little details, it can feel a lot like you did a whole lot of work for nothing. Another important skill is figuring out how to situate these characters in space and make it look like they are realistically occupying that space. A lot of that has to do with the proportion of the characters to one another. You know, you have the paladin in the foreground and he is very large. I mean, relative to the others, his upper arm is about as wide as the shoulders of the guy on the far left. And that really helps to push that perspective. And perspective doesn't just mean the orientation of the lines in an image, it also means the size and overlapping of figures in the ground and the relationship to one another in order to create that illusion of a space in a two-dimensional drawing. Something else to consider when, when working on a composition like this is the balance of foreground to background and how you can create interest in the background by using things like pattern and architecture and focal points within the background itself to draw the viewer's eyes around the image in that same way. Because the more you can get people looking at different parts of the drawing, the longer they're going to look at your, your art. So what's the final drawing going to look like? 
Well, you gotta wait till next week to find out, but I will be coloring these lines in next week's video, and I'm really excited to continue to talk about the process of this piece with you then. As always, thank you for taking the time to watch my video. I can't wait to see you in the next one.